Remain standing for the scripture reading. And don't try not to be warned today. If I'm saying, well, if I'm saying, that's right, it's working. Glory to God. That's, that's, that's all I know is working. Glory to God. That song that was in the 70s, Jesus can work it out. Glory to God. And they kept saying, work it out. Glory to God. They kept saying, work it out. Amen. All I know is he's going to work it out. And if, you, and if you really look at stuff, glory to God. Remember when I had that message and I had that timeline about that God is planned for this? Amen. Your situation was already worked out before you even knew about it. Glory to God. God ain't making a way. The way was already made. You just came into the timeline to realize he made the way, but really, he made the way before the foundations of the earth. Your way was already made. He already said there was a way made in the wilderness. I don't care what your wilderness is. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. So pray and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on, for therefore are you come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened to the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal needed, and make cakes upon the herd. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched the calf, tender and good. 
and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it, and he took butter and milk and a calf, which he had dressed and set up before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind them. Now Abraham and Sarah were very old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the men of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I am surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for the, she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the men rose up from this and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham? That thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Wow. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Father in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Flesh can't do this, but the Holy Spirit can. And Lord God, in these few moments of time, help me, God, to give them the revelation you gave me. Yes. And I give you glory and praise for yes. the power of God in the strong name of Jesus Christ. And that we pray. Amen and amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's no longer a secret. It's no longer a secret. Glory to God. Amen. You may have your seat. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. It's no longer a secret. Glory to God. My focus scripture says, shall I hide from Abraham? the thing that's getting ready to happen. I don't have time to really go through the whole story, but the gist of the story is that, amen, remember when Paul says, be careful how you entertain strangers because sometimes they are angels unaware. I need you to understand that to be hospitable is a blessing. It is a blessing. Abraham, three men showed up and Abraham, uh, and I'm just in the middle of nowhere, and Abraham said, hey, hold on. Hey, let's, let's can you Stay a while. Let's get you something to drink. Let's let's get you something to eat. And and they went and fit and got the best stuff. Glory to God. They didn't pull out no leftovers. <laughs> they didn't pull out no bologna sandwiches. He went and got a tender calf. And then dressed it. And mother went in the kitchen and made some biscuits. And then they didn't bring out the margarine. They bought out the butter. <laughs> Glory to God. And they didn't bring out the power milk. They brought out the, all the vitamin D. And they gave them the best. And the Bible says, amen. And when you realize, see, when you give to God, he gives back to you. Yes. Now, he didn't know why these men showed up. But, see, you don't know what your blessing is. And so they gave to them without even asking. And now the Lord is now saying, uh, according to the time of life, you're going to have a son and your wife, Sarah, is going to carry that child. And so, you know, the tents are not far away, so she opened the other tent here, what they're saying, and she laughed within herself. <laughs> you know how you do it. <laughs> As the old mother would say, you know, I got tickled to myself. <laughs> Didn't laugh out loud, just got tickled to myself. <laughs> and she said within herself, I'm too old to be having a baby. And he's older than I am. <laughs> and see, the Lord knows your thoughts are far off. And he said, now, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Your wife over there laughing and uh, within herself. You know, you can't hide from God. You know, he knows what you're doing when you ain't in front of him. He knows what you're doing when you ain't in front of church. That's why you should never try to impress people because people are not always watching you. If you want to impress anybody, impress the one that sits on the throne. Because he sees you all the time. Glory to God. I, I can look innocent to you, and but I can treat you wife wrong at home and if she can come on and put on the front amen to make it look like we doing well but glory to God but God sees us everywhere and so if I'm going to try to impress anybody I'm sure I'm going to impress Jesus and then so when uh, see they they did some things and then they said go and do what you said 
and they was passing by because they was looking towards Sodom. Now, I got some revelations this morning on Sodom, but I don't really have time to go in, and I'll talk about it another time. But uh, as uh, they left their blessing, they went on the way. The two men went, but the Lord, it recognized, the Bible recognizes the Lord, stood by Abraham. And the Lord, you know how, you know, you kind of start talking to yourself and you answer yourself. Yeah. You know, and you, and you know, and I'm really, God really kind of showed me a little bit about himself. You know, you learn a little as you go. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we know he knows the end from the beginning. Yes. Yeah. And we know he's the beginning to the end. Yeah. And we know that nothing's ever surprises him. That's right. And so if anything, sometimes if he wants to be surprised, he'll hide it from himself. Now, how do I know that? Because I know that sometimes you'll hide money from yourself and forget where you put it. Amen. That's right. It ain't Alzheimer's. No. It's just you hide it from yourself. Yeah. And so, remember when uh, God already tested Abraham mm -hmm. with his son? Now, he's given a prophecy years before. But later on, you know, a prophecy ain't no good if you got to kill it. But so he said, this is, and this is what I really like in the scripture. He said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Well, right. Shall I hide it from him? And the Lord said, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. So God is already in the future knowing that Abraham is going to do just what he said. Yeah, yeah. Because he didn't say he was going to bless his child. He was going to bless his children. Now, you know, you know, God, you know, God be you know, God you be awesome. You just be doing stuff, and we just be trying to figure out what you're doing. And if he already says you're gonna have a child by Sarah, uh -huh. and even though we know of the mess up that Sarah did, Amen. God already knew what was going to be entailed. Amen. So he said he's still gonna teach his children. Yes, yeah, right. Because Abraham had more than just two kids. Yeah. Because he started having all kinds of babies. <laughs> Glory to God. All kinds of stuff was going on. But the thing was, God already knew what was going to happen. So remember when he told Abraham, look, uh, we're we going go to go up and let's sacrifice the child. And later on in life, as they're going, and you know his team was with them, and he said, y'all, y'all stay down here. And y'all y'all." Stay, the, Bible, the Bible said it. Y'all stay with the asses, and me and my son are going to go up and worship. And so they went on up to worship. Sometimes you got to let people stay by what they at. Yeah. And you're going to have to learn how to serve Jesus for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. All right, see, now I don't want to say because, you know, if I start saying, you know, donkeys, y'all going to say I'm cussing, so I'm going to stop from right there. But, you know, you got to let people stay with their tails. Because they will prevent you from serving God. Yes, they will. And sometimes you got to lead people by themselves. Yes, so you can worship God. So him and his son went up to worship God. And this is what his son said. Well, dad, we going up. Where's the sacrifice? He said, oh, the Lord will provide. Because if he would have told that boy you to sacrifice, he would have said, dad is gone cuckoo, I'm gone. Because he had been enough with his father to understand true worship. Amen. See, that's why you got to bring your children to church. Yeah. Your children are not going to learn Jesus at home. Not gonna. They're not going to learn it from the Xbox. No. They're not going to learn it from the PS4. No, no. They're not going to learn it from the computer. They ain't going to learn it on YouTube because they're going to be looking at other things instead of religious programming. That's right. <laughs> so that means you physically got to bring the children to church so they can get some type of Jesus in them. Okay. So he and so when he went up and worshiped, and, and, and the angel of the Lord stopped him when he was about to strike his son and said, Hey, now the Lord knows that you would do this thing for him. There's a ram in the bush. Now, God already knows the beginning from the end. But yet he had to hide it from himself to say, let's see what he's going to do. Because God can hide it from himself. 
Who will you say that? Remember when Jesus says, me and the Father are one? Yeah. But he said, I go unto my Father because he prepared a place for me. But then he said, remember what Jesus said? He said, but I don't know when I'm coming back. Uh -huh. Only the Father knows. Only. So Jesus didn't know because God hid it from him. Amen. But we say God came out of Jesus. Mm. We say Jesus came out of God, right? Mm -hmm. And so now he knows how to hide things from himself Amen. so that he can see what you're going to do with what he's given you. Now, okay, you might say, well, Pastor, you, you're just trying to stretch a little bit too much. Mm. Well, remember when he says he will separate our sins from us as far as the east from the west? You, how do you separate east and west? We know there's an equator, and we know, and if you ever roll along the equator, you'll see sunlight and daylight if you flew one side, nighttime. If you look along the equator, the oceans that run together, one water is salt, the other one is fresh. It's a dividing line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if God says, I'm going to separate your mess from you, right. then I don't remember it no more. Now, I don't know where we got the term of the sea of forgetfulness, because I was trying to find that in the Bible. I was, I was trying to find it. You know, the old folks say, he's going to throw your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. But, uh, but, like, Lord, well, where's that at? Where's it at? You know, because it's, where do you put stuff where you don't see a mess? Especially when somebody else thinking about it. Because, you know, people like to bring up your past. Amen. They like to bring up your past. And, oh, remember when you was drunk on the corner and I picked you up and remember all the, ooh, those were the days. And God is looking like, what are they talking about? Because the blood covers my past. Covers my past. That Because when he looks at me, he sees a son. So he don't see the foolishness that I did last week. If I repented for it. So that means that God hides stuff from himself. So God doesn't judge you according to your past. That's why I really like it when God saves people unlikely people. Because he likes to make church, the church world just, just go up in a frenzy. Yes. Right. I'm great. Save somebody you wouldn't even thought I was going to save. Right, right, right. Church folk be so religious and so self-righteous. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know why the Lord would do that and give them a ministry. I've been here all these years and he hasn't given me a word. Because right. he had to go on the outside because you're so self-righteous. Just because you think you're living the best, that doesn't that doesn't qualify you for what God has ordained you to do. Amen. Just because you're living right, that there are monks that live right. Yeah. All right. Hello, somebody. If you don't walk by faith, All right. that is the determining factor if you're going to go back with Jesus or not. Because people, you can live right by eating right and not putting harmful things in your body and doing those things that are nice, but that don't get you to heaven. We used to sing that song, if you live right, heaven belongs to you. But that's not true. It's not. Because there are people I know that live right, but they were disobedient to God and wouldn't do his will. And that's what he told me. He was like, Somebody, I had one of the uh, mothers said, well, Brother Michael, you can live right on your own if you don't do the will of God. You're going to hell. She said it in such a sweet voice, I couldn't get mad. <laughs> I couldn't even get mad. Because I was being self-righteous. And that's why you got to make sure that you're not self-righteous because God knows all the crazy stuff we were going to do but still called you. Amen. I don't know why y'all still have trouble and tripping with God because he's called you and you was a mess. Yeah. All of us sitting here have been a mess. Amen. And we ain't too far from a mess right now. Amen. Amen. I don't know why we act like we graduated and we got a first place ribbon sitting on our chest saying we have a wife. It is nothing but the grace of God that you are saved. Amen. It ain't your works. It's the gift of God. So don't be getting upset with Sarah because she messed up because God knew she was going to mess up anyway. Because he knew the whole family dynamics. 
So you tripping over, oh, I done did this and the Lord don't want to use me. Please. Amen. He knew what you was going to do before you did it. Amen. And still didn't change his mind. Because if he knew I was going to be a fool in 2018, uh -huh. he still called me the pastor. Amen. Now maybe y'all may not follow me if I act a plum fool, but that didn't stop the calling. Because he already knew the way that I was going to take it. Amen. But that doesn't mean he doesn't wipe it away. Mm -hmm. So you holding on the stuff that you used to do, forget that stuff. Amen. Put it back on the devil. Amen. Remind him he's going to be judged for his foolishness. Because yes. he's going to end up in the lake of fire. All right. Yes. So now, so when we talk about Abraham, God knows what you're going to do. He said, shall I hide the thing that I'm going to do from Abraham? Because he has family in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot was hanging around with them. And the same, now the two men. Now, and, 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 and when I really looked at this, and you just really got to read the whole chapter of chapter Genesis to really get an understanding. But God says, there's a cry that I'm hearing out of Sodom, and I'm sending some investigators to go check it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we know the Lord knows everything, but he has he looks, he just dismisses certain things. Amen. And so the cries that I can imagine, well, Lord, is anybody praying? Or are they crying out because they're being raped? <laughs> because when 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 Lot brought the two guys in, mm -hmm. and they said, Well, we're gonna stay out in the middle of the city. <laughs> Lot said, Oh no, 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 no. You don't want to do that. <laughs> come on over here in my house. Come on, please, just come, come on, come on. He restrained, come on. And so when the men of the city found out they were there, they said, come on, we're going over to the last house. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, old and young mm -hmm. came out because they wanted to know them. Mm -hmm. And I ain't talking about to inquire where right. they come from. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> and Lot said, come on now, y'all can't do this. He went outside, closed the door behind him. Y'all can't do this. Is that what I'm going to talk about? But mm. Let me give you just a few minutes. Of I want to go do this. We can't do, don't do this. Don't do this. No, 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 no. You don't know what's going on. Don't do this. We don't care what you say, Lot. Give us them men. He said, look, come on, I got two girls. The two daughters that were engaged to two men who weren't even fighting about them, all right? Uh, I got, I, and, and nobody slept with them. And come on, y'all can have them. You know, because he is now looking like, you're going to bring a curse on all of us. Yeah. But, you know, I, I had to, I'm going to have to go back and really talk about that because what father will give up his daughters? Amen. All right. So that's a whole other subject. So I don't want to get on the ranch and on that. But uh, uh, the, the the Bible says that the men pulled Lot back in because they was ready to break the door down. Mm -hmm. Struggling with blindness, yeah. old and old and young men still trying to find where the door is. Now maybe that's some strong lust. That's some strong lust. Your behind that got blind and you still. Trying to figure out how you're going to get your groove on. Oh, boy. <laughs> help, help. Mm. Not today. <laughs> and the angels of the Lord said, we got our answer. Lot, get you and your family and get up out of here. While this is going on, Abraham is having a, 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 he's having a conversation with God. Lord, if you spare the city for 50, went all the way down to 10. He said, uh, all right, well, I'm going to leave him alone. Okay, I ain't gonna say nothing else. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he said, uh, it's been determined. Get him out. So the Bible says that the angels told, get your, go and get your family out. And even the two son in laws, they didn't even believe, so they stayed. So the Bible says they left. I said I want to talk about it, but I'm in it now. So I'm gonna get back to it. This, uh, they said, now when you leave, don't look back. And I was, as I was studying, uh, they, some of the Jewish uh, history was when the men came and they went to go and make some food for the two men that arrived in Sodom, that Lot's wife went to go talk to, to some neighbors and to get some food from them. And then that's how the word got out, that they knew the new men were in the city. And so when she turned back, and look, she became a pillar of salt because she did not have any salt in the house. Now that's that was Jewish 
you know, some Jewish talk, so that's not where I can biblically prove. But what I will say is, if God tells you to move forward, mm. you will be stuck looking back. Amen. Well, amen. That's one thing I can tell you. Because if you keep looking back, you ain't going to move. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the Bible says she immediately turned into a pillar of salt. And now, and, and you know, my Holy Ghost imagination. Well, I won't put the Holy Ghost. I'm just saying my imagination. <laughs> because you got to be comfortable living in a city that is crazy on perverseness. Be comfortable. You, um, so... And they didn't even mention his, her name. No. So, you know, that lets me know some things was going on. So, anyway, uh, and I forgot that the enemies of, <laughs> of the children of Israel, the seed of Abraham, was Lot's kids. Because mm -hmm. his daughters got him drunk, mm -hmm. slept with both of them, got him pregnant. And the Moabites and the Ammonites descended from Lot. Right. Enemies to the seed of Abraham. Right. Now, regardless of how stuff works out, Abraham prayed for Lot. Yes. But sometimes we pray for people, that don't mean they always turn out right. God shows mercy because you pray. Amen. It is still up to people to do the right thing. Amen. So this thing was generationally in Lot's family. Mm -hmm. And Abraham, had, God had to finally tell Abraham, prophets preach the message powerful, let Lot go. Amen. Because he had to let him go. Amen. And so when God says, shall I hide the thing that I do from Abraham? That God has such a connection with Abraham that he don't want to keep no secrets. Amen. That I don't want you to go into nothing unawares. Mm -hmm. So let me give you some insight because we're friends. Mm -hmm. Now you got to be a friend of God if God come walking in your door talking to you. Amen. <laughs> now it wasn't that Abraham was doing the right thing. Because he had some stuff going on. Mm -hmm. But he sure had some faith. You gotta have some faith. Lord, would you spare the city for 50? Jesus. He didn't go right down to 10. He worked himself down. What about 45? <laughs> Can I get 40? Can I get 40, 40, 40, 40, 30, 35, 35? Lord, Lord, don't let me be a nuisance. What about 30 people? Lord, Jesus, forgive me. What about 25? Lord, Lord, have mercy. You know I'm just beside myself. What about 20? And he just worked it all the way down. He said, Lord, don't be mad. What about 10? Mm -hmm. I will. And he left. Mm -hmm. It wasn't 10 to save the city. But let me tell you how when you pray for somebody and they can get the blessings because of you. When Lot was negotiating, because the angels told him, leave. He said, well, I think I want to go to Zohar. Can I go? That's a little small place. Can I go over there? Don't tear that up. He said, all right, go over there. But eventually, he had to leave there. Because the blessing of Abraham was on Lot. Amen. Now, let me tell you. In Genesis, the 14th chapter, when, uh, Abraham, I, I want to read that to you. Because now I'm really almost through. The 18th verse says, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed them and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the most high God which hath delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Yeah. Now, Abraham did something because Melchizedek gave him a blessing. Yeah. Now, you got to make sure you're going to be hospitable enough to be a blessing to people who have been a blessing to you. Amen. Now, now, this is what scholars think about Sodom and Gomorrah. They actually felt like the sin was not being hospitable to God's people. That's what they feel like. They feel like because they, they took them in and the city wasn't hospitable enough to the angels of God. And that's why they felt like they were destroyed. But 
we know it all plays a part. Abraham sold and he gave to him. Now, when you go down uh, to Genesis 28, you go 250 years later down the road, uh, Jacob, after he had saw the vision of what we call Jacob's ladder, mm -hmm. and he saw the angels descending and ascending, and then Jacob gave tithes. Now, 250 later, years later, then the law says, you know what, this is something good. Something about when you give mm -hmm. and bless the people of God, yeah. you get blessed back. Amen. Amen. So this is a law that Abraham started yeah. before it was a law. Amen. That's right. So when you hear people say, oh, that was Old Testament, well, it was before Old Testament. Amen. Well, because Abraham was doing it before the Old Testament was written. Because right. wasn't Moses write the first five books of the Bible anyway? Yeah. So Abraham had already been dead, right? Mm -hmm. But he already started a principle, and we are called the children of Abraham, right? Yes. And if we want to be blessed, yes. we know how to be a blessing, right? Amen. So when you give to God's work, you are setting yourself up to be blessed Hallelujah. at all times. Amen. Okay? Amen. So now, shall I hide it from him? Now, because Abraham was already a giver, mm -hmm. honey. Now, you know, when, when, you know, when the anointing came in and y'all was singing blessed and blah, 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 yeah. you know, because when people give, it's like a whole new atmosphere opened up. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. I mean, because God is like, okay, God, pain has to leave the room mm -hmm. because when people give, it just causes a whole new atmosphere to come in. It called, it, it, a whole new atmosphere. It's like, Lord, how do you explain this? It's like, people do what I do because I changed it when I gave my son. Hallelujah. Yes, you did. You yes. changed everything yes. when you gave us him. Yes. I mean, you gave us life, but my God, you, you stopped death yes. when you gave us your son. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so, when you give to God, mm -hmm. what are you stopping And then what are you starting? Yes. Because when God gave, he stopped some stuff. Yes. Then he started some stuff. Yes. So when I give, when he said to Malachi, I wasn't going to bring up Malachi, but he said, I will stop the stop devil yes. for your sake. Yes. And then I'll open up the window of my shop. Yes. I'll stop the yes. devil from messing with you. Yes. And I'll start the blessings to roll on in. So that when you mean when I give to God and when I give toward his people and when I give towards whom he's telling me to give towards to, you mean to tell me I can really live a whole nother way? Yes. You can live a much better life when you are a giver yes. instead of being stingy. Amen. Hallelujah. Stingy. Yes. That's all the mother said. Yes. Boy, you're just stingy. But when you give to God, yes, yes. he said, he said, if my he said, I just need you to help my people understand. And and Paul said, look, now look, give cheerfully. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, give what you can. Yes, that's right. And so you may not be able to give a thousand dollars because you don't make a thousand dollars. You can only give what you can give. Yes. But what you do need to give is least. Give him a 10%. Yes. Just a 10. Yes. Let that be your bare minimum. Amen. But then, when you give him above that, because he said it belongs to him anyway. Yes. So I'm just giving you back what you're giving me, because yes. thank you for the increase. I appreciate it. Because yes. when people don't appreciate stuff, they just think it's owed to them. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Even my job, <laughs> you know, they used to give free food all the time. They used to give us turkeys for Christmas and ham for you know Thanksgiving we used to pick it up from work and we big old truck coming on the parking lot we all get a little pass go get your free turkey I'm here for my free turkey yeah put it in the freezer yeah hey baby they gave me a turkey oh okay baby somebody else gave me a turkey well thank the Lord we got a turkey for later oh boy I was getting my free turkey all right you know something you know you know church folks be crazy you know Somebody be trying to give up. Oh no, 
I don't need any handouts. Okay, baby. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sugar. Yeah. Amen. You're going to need a hand up later. All right. Because you don't know who you're going to use. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know who God going to use to bless you. Yeah. Took them turkeys and I showed it. Every free one, I got it. Yeah. And was mad when they stopped it. Yeah. And you know the answer they want to tell me? They said, well, at least you still got a job. Yeah. Okay, well, all right. Because you know we start talking about them corporate people and something else. They just want their bonuses higher and bigger. That's all they want to do. They want, they want to hold up all the money. And you know, we get to complain and, and all that. You complain. And then uh, uh, then we say, or oh, at least you could have said thank you when we did that job for you. They said, your paycheck is our thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which is true. Yes. But sometimes we want to feel more appreciated yeah. at our job than just a paycheck. I'm just saying, I don't care what job you work. You want somebody to say, you know, I appreciate you for what you do. You're such a blessing to us. I don't know how I would make it without you. And just to feel appreciated. Well, God wants to feel appreciated too. But wait a minute. I opened up some doors for you. Can't you be a blessing to somebody else? I, I had somebody pay a bill off for you. Can you pay it forward? I mean, you know, we see those challenges on Facebook. You know, somebody behind me paid for my groceries. Right. So they say, I'm going to do it the next time. Amen. Until you hear their total. Ooh, 8562. Oh, I'll wait until the next one, Jesus. Let me go to the dollar store. <laughs> the person in front of you got a basket full of dollar products. Oh, they got $50 worth. Jesus, I'm going to wait, Lord. I'm not here to speak. <laughs> you got to be a cheerful giver. You're going to pay it forward. Got to be a cheerful giver. God gave to us. So our giving derives from God Himself and it derives from the Father Abraham, who we have a pattern by. And remember when uh, the uh, Pharisees, Sadducees were ready to throw Jesus off the cliff because he was talking about he was Son of God. And he said, You ain't even 40 years old yet. We know our father Abraham. He said before Abraham was, mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. <laughs> he said now before Abraham started doing all that he started oh doing, God. he had to get it from somebody else. Yeah. He was looking at me. Because yeah. the only way that you can walk in faith, you got to look at God. Yes. And when you look at God, yes. then you'll start doing those things that he's commanded you to do. Amen. So what are you saying? Well, pastor, is all about giving. It is about giving yeah. to help God give to you what you need to have in your life. Amen. It, it's so awesome. Psalms 41 says, uh, blessed is he that considers the poor, for the Lord will deliver him out of all his troubles. You mean to tell me if I help somebody else that can't help themselves, yeah. you're going to break me out of trouble? Hallelujah. I ain't got to go on no fast for no three days and three nights to get out of trouble. Amen. <laughs> Just consider the poor and try to help somebody. He said, I'll deliver you out of your trouble. Yeah. Giving just causes yeah. blessings to happen your way. And when you give God praise, a sacrifice of praise. I'm talking about that. Well, you know, you know, there are certain people in church you already know going to dance. It don't matter. You already know. Well, you know, you know, I call you out. You know, they just already just going to dance. You know, there, there she go again. There he go again. They, they, you already know they're going to give a praise. Even if the organ ain't going, they're going to give them a praise. Hallelujah. You already know. And, and, but when, you, when you're really in a bad situation and you're feeling bad and you don't even feel like giving praise, but you move upon, up over, that is what is a sacrifice of praise. When you give that, you see, we already are supposed to be praises, but when you can praise them when you're doing bad, that causes God to give to you because that's a sacrifice of praise. So, Pastor, what are you saying? God is going to leave out the secrets and make sure you know everything you need to know so that you can be successful. The only reason why a lot was spared is because God let Abraham in on it. You know you need God to let him in on some stuff that your family is going through. And all you need God is to do reveal it so you can change it. 
That's the yes. thing about it. Abraham changed that thing. Yes, Because yes. yes. the, them boys was on their way to tear up Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. But Abraham knew what's going on now. I don't know what's going on. So can you tell me what's going on? You know, sometimes you got to be a little nosy. You know, my wife said, boy, you nosy. I said, well, I said, well, you got to be now. Because I ain't going to be a riot taking my own notes so somebody can get me killed. Amen. That's right. You got to know that story. <laughs> now, I need to know what's going on. Because people will fool you and you end up dead. All right. Now. All right. Wait a minute. Now, you know, people don't want to tell you what they want to tell you. So, you know, I'm good at that. But don't put me in the middle of something. Amen. And you know the truth. I need to know. Because I stopped that. I'm the last one to know. I don't say that no more. Mm -mm. I'll be the first one to know. Because I need to stay alive. Amen. Will I hide this thing I do from Abraham? Lord, don't hide nothing from Michael. Lord Because I got enemies Amen. that want to take me out. Mm. So I need to know who they are. Yes. So I know how to bless them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know how to pray. Right. Because you can stop your enemies. Yes. When you please the Lord, yes. he'll make his enemies to be at peace with you. Yes. Shall I hide this thing I'm going to do? Mm -hmm. If God had hid it from Abraham, My Lord. he would have been grieving because of Lot. Mm -hmm. The only time he was grieving was when God told Lot, let him go. Amen. If God told you to let folk go, Amen. let him go. Amen. You ain't going to cry as hard later. Yeah. Right. You may cry a little bit now. It's okay. Let them go. Because you're going to cry harder later if you don't let them go. So, Pastor, how can I do and change how I live so that I won't have anything hid from me? you got to make sure Jesus is your choice. Amen, amen. Jesus has to be number one in your life to be. so that he says, I can't hide this from him. Even though the devil want to sneak up on him. I can't let it be hid from him. Because let's be honest, we've had some surprise attacks. Yes. <laughs> but there are some things he gave us some pre-warning about. Yes. And it's like, thank you, Lord, because I already knew this was coming. So, Lord, I don't want you to hide nothing from me. So give me the information that I need so that I can be successful. And this is how you're going to be successful. Jesus is Lord over your life. Yeah, that's if you don't have Jesus, it's a good day to accept him Today. and to receive Today. him so that he can say, shall I hide this from you? Mm -mm, I can't hide it from him. I can't hide it from her because now they belong to me. Yeah. They have made me Lord over their life. So I now have to lead and guide them because they've given me permission. You need permission to be blessed. Yes, right. I remember in your school, in class, you can only pass classes when the class ended and you have five minutes before the next class starts. Right. But sometimes you have an emergency and you needed a hall pass. Because yeah. if you was in the hallways without permission, All right now. you got sent to the principal's office. Right. And so you don't want to be walking around without permission. Not for your blessings. Amen. I don't want God to bless me so yeah. to make me so nervous that I can be like the men that went and found the treasure hid it Jesus. came back and said we better tell somebody right, right, right. for some mischief fall upon us mm -hmm. they were so blessed Jesus. they didn't care what the leprous men had to say mm -hmm. a whole government came back alive Yes. When the army left all of their jewelry, yes. left all of their property, right. and it was the leprous men that found it. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord God, I want him to bless me so yes. that I'll feel so bad mm -hmm. about not sharing. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to feel bad, too, right. about not sharing. Yeah. 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 Amen. Christmas time is going to come up. United Way is going to be out ringing those bells. Yeah. They're going to be, I volunteer. I sat there, rung bells, giving. Other people are going to be looking for gifts. We're going to do stuff at Christ our Hill that be a blessing to people. 
But uh, it is all about giving. Amen. And it says, just the season to be jolly. <laughs> but we don't wait till Christmas to give. Amen. We give all year long. Amen. Because we are givers. Amen. Not Santa's little helpers. Because <laughs> if you only give at Christmas time, the Santa's little helper. Yeah. God gives all year long, right? Okay. So if you don't have Jesus, it's a good day to receive him. It's a good day. If you don't have Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me. And help me to become a son of God. Forgive me for my sins. Wash me in your blood. Sanctify me through thy truth. Thy word is true. Deliver my soul. Cast the devil out of my mind. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart God raised him from the dead. Lord God, save me. Save me from myself. Save me from my past. Save me from my family. And help me to become the son of God you ordained me to be. Jesus, you are Lord over my life. Have your way in me. Show me how I can be blessed. And lead me the way you have me to go. And I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap your hands and give God praise and just welcome.